All right, everyone. So for our first day of class, social media for your business, part one, we're going to talk about one of the big important social networks. Next time we'll talk about another one. Next time we'll talk about another one. We're going to spend one day on one network. The first network we're going to talk about is Twitter. So go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Open any one you want. <coughs> You can. Sure. Well, here's the password. I said that at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. So you want to go over to twitter.com, T W I T T E R, twitter.com. That's the first network we're going to use because we have many to choose from. And the purpose of the course is that we're going to, you're going to figure out, after we use a variety of them, you're going to figure out what um, is best for you. Because all of these networks have hundreds of millions of people using them. Twitter, I believe at last count, has about 320 million users globally. So you'll be able to reach a lot of an audience. Um, we'll get to Google+. Plus. That's also got another 300 million users or so. We'll talk about Instagram. That one just reached 500 million users like two weeks ago. We'll talk about Facebook. That one's got one and a half billion users at the moment. So lots of people are using these social networks, not just to share funny cat pictures and such, but also to reach an audience, also to do customer service, to sell a product. Because the short answer for what social media is is a captive audience. Uh, social media, old school social media, is all around us. We don't call it that, but it's marketing, it's advertising. In the real world, marketing, advertising, that's a form of social media. In the digital world, it's more interactive, but it's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's all of that stuff. Have you heard of the network, uh, the social network Pinterest? Raise your hand if you've heard of Pinterest. We have the ancient form of Pinterest right here on this wall. That's Pinterest. That's Pinterest 1.0, 0.0. That's Pinterest before it became digital. You pin something on the board, you share it with people, you came in here, you saw it. That's like Pinterest. But Pinterest is the next generation of it because then you liked what was there and you're going to share it to your pin board and so forth. So Twitter will be the first one we talk about. It's been around just over 10 years now. I think they celebrated 10 years one or two months ago. So Twitter's been around a decade. And Twitter's become a very big, um, important communications medium. You're going to see everyone uses Twitter. We've got the Chargers on Twitter. We've got NASA on Twitter. We've got um, this school on Twitter. You can get all the official Pokemon news on Twitter. Everyone, everything's on Twitter, every business, celebrity, and so forth. And so for us, the purpose of this then will be um, we want to reach an audience. We want to market to more people. If I have a restaurant in the real world and I want people to come to eat at my restaurant, I have to engage in some marketing. I could hope that someone walks in front of my restaurant and walks in. And I could hope that then they, um, through word of mouth, tell more people about my restaurant and get me more clients. And maybe that'll work. But it'll work much better if the restaurant also advertises on the radio, advertises on TV, advertises on a billboard, has a person flipping that sign around on the corner. Marketing, advertising, in the real world, it helps and it works for companies. Again, my company works with various other clients throughout San Diego and they engage in social media and they engage in real world marketing and it works. Real world marketing has the disadvantage that 99% of the time it's not free. You have to pay for those flyers or billboards or radio ads or, or TV ads and so forth. You have, to, you have to pay for that real world marketing. And one of the advantages that social media has is that you can do it all for free. It doesn't cost anything to tweet. It doesn't cost anything to post on Facebook. It doesn't cost anything to pin on Pinterest. There are aspects of these social networks where you can pay and you'll reach more of an audience, sure. 
but we're going to talk about as most often as we can the free aspect of things. I'm going to be writing notes and I'm going to put these notes in the network folder at the end of the day if you'd like a copy of my notes or you could take your own notes and again I'm recording all of this request the link and I'll send you the link So social media is the new form of marketing advertising social media is to reach an audience to market to an audience that billboard that is out there, let's say you paid whatever amount of money to put a big old billboard on the five, uh, you know, right down over on um, Aero Drive down there, and you know how traffic gets on the five. You're going to have uh, people driving by and stuck in traffic and looking at your billboard. And people are going to see that billboard, and some amount of people are going to care about the billboard and call you or go to your website hire you but a lot more people are not going to care and and stop looking at it after the the third time that they've looked at it so there's going to be a lot of people that are looking at that real world marketing that don't care that's why marketers have to constantly spend and try to reach an audience that's why you get those coupons in the mail that a lot of us don't care about but some of us do and some people use the coupon the company succeeds social media will let you reach a lot of people and especially people that care the most about your product or brand or company or nonprofit organization or your paintings or your 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 writings or whatever you will be able to reach a captive audience social media is better because it lets you reach a dedicated, uh, we'll say actually an interested captive audience. You're a captive audience when you hear that ad on the radio, or maybe you tune it out mentally, or you tune change the radio. Someone puts a flyer on your windshield while you're at the supermarket. Some of us will not even look at it, toss it hopefully in the recycle bin. Um, some of us will look at that and say, I do need carpet cleaning, and call them. They've made a sale. Via social media, we will be able to target our message much more directly to an audience that might care more. So that's why we talk about social media for business. It's an audience that would care more, in theory. So what we're going to do is, at the top right corner, we will either click sign up or log in. If you already have a Twitter account, you can use it. Or if you don't, we can create one. I'm going to go through the process of creating one just to show you what it looks like. If you already have one, again, you can use your existing one or create another one. You can maybe create another account just to see, just to play with this account, and then we can delete it later. You can create as many Twitter accounts as you want and delete them when you're done with them or use your existing one. The catch is that it's one email address per account. So if you already have one email address set up with one account, you'll have to use a different email address to set up another account. I'm going to click sign up. At the moment, Twitter does not differentiate between a person and a business account. I'm going to say Twitter does not discern between personal and business accounts. Facebook does, Pinterest does, I think a couple of other ones, Facebook, Pinterest, and others do. We'll talk about that later. But at the moment, Twitter, you can create an account. It could be personal, it can be business, doesn't matter. Later when we talk about Facebook, we'll see you do have to have a Facebook business account to use Facebook for business. 
And a lot of times what people do, they don't know that. And they create a Facebook account the wrong way, and then they have a personal account as their business account. And technically, Facebook can shut you down because technically you're violating their terms. Whenever you click that button that says, I agree, somewhere buried in there, it tell, it's saying, you agree to use Facebook business pages for business purposes. And you agree to use Facebook personal pages for personal purposes. So if you do it the wrong way, they could shut you down. We'll talk about how to fix it, of course, if you did it the wrong way. But a quick way to tell on Facebook, if your business is personal or, or business on Facebook is, if you have friends, you're personal. You don't get friends on a business page, you get likes. If your Facebook page is getting likes, you're a business. You did it right. If your Facebook business page is getting friends, you didn't do it right. We'll talk about fixing it later. And with Pinterest, you can't fully tell very, very quickly, but we'll get to that eventually. We'll get to Facebook and Pinterest later. For Twitter, it doesn't matter. For Twitter, we'll just create an account. And what Twitter has is, Twitter uses a full name and a username. Full name is your business name and is not unique. The username is your short address and is unique. Because the first thing it's asking me here is, put your full name. Full name makes it sound like it wants my name. I would put Victor Campos. No, actually, I'm about to create a Twitter account for my fictional business, Victor's Bakery. So I would put the name of my business under full name, even though it makes it sound like it's my personal name. So the full name is still going to relate to your business name. It's not unique, which means I can create a Twitter account right now. It's asking for full name, and I can create an account right now called Southwestern College. And you'll say, great, welcome Southwestern College. I can create a, a business right now and call it um, Phil's Barbecue. It'll say, great, welcome Phil's Barbecue. This will never tell you, no, you can't do that. This is not unique. The full name is not unique. On the next screen, the username is the unique one, and only one in the world can have that name. So if I try to set myself up at Southwestern College on the next screen, it'll say that name's taken, the username. If I try to create a brand new account as um, Phil's Barbecue, it'll tell me that that name is taken. So this full name is not unique, the username is. Yes? So the username is not unique, but the full name is. Question. Yes, both of these can be changed at any time. The problem is, if this name here, if you've chosen a username because there's only one in the world, and then you change it to something else, and someone takes it, you lost it. Full name, that can be changed anytime you want, and there's really no problem. But the username is the one that's the unique one. All right, so it's asking me for full name. I'm making up a business. I'm going to do Victor's Bakery. There is a limit here. You can do Victor's Bakery or make it up, whatever you'd like, or use a real one. This does have a limit. One of our clients is a client known as Italianissimo Trattoria, and I run out of space. So there's a limit to the full name. There's a limit to the username. Um, this is just the way the system is. It's like that also on Pinterest and other networks. There's limits to these names, unfortunately. So sometimes you have to get creative. Um, I forgot what we call that one. I think we just call it Italianissimo T. There's limits. I think it's like 15 or 16. Here I can write apostrophes, uppercase letters, symbols, exclamation points, 
emoji characters, little icons and such. I can put whatever sort of name and punctuation here with spaces and such. When we get to the username, that's not allowed. So the full name, anything works. For the username, only um, letters, numbers, no symbols. So username is much more restrictive. <laughs> Phone or email. So again, if you already have a Twitter account, you can only use one email account at a time. Uh, you could put a phone or an email. Um, I'm gonna. I believe it'll let us make up an email address here temporarily. Victor at the victor.com. It says okay. That's a fake email. You should put a real email if you're going to use this for real because this will be the way for you to retrieve your password if you get locked out. Password make up a password here or use the same password you've used before. This can be changed. All of this stuff can be changed. We'll see how later. So type in a password. And we've got Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits. That means, would you allow Twitter to use cookies on your computer to give you a better Twitter experience? Now cookies are little files that many websites put on your computer to track you. And that might be good, that might be bad. For example, on Twitter, one reason why it might be good is because if you usually browse a variety of tech-related websites because your business is a tech company, Twitter will try to show you content related to tech that might be useful to you. If I'm a bakery and I'm often visiting bakery websites, Twitter will see that and show me content and help me related to baking. If I don't want that, I can turn that off. If I want to use Twitter a little more anonymously, I could. That does not have any to, anything to do with ads, however. We're going to see ads on Twitter once in a while, just like we see ads on Facebook, like we see ads on Pinterest, like we see ads on YouTube. We see ads everywhere. We can't get away from ads online anymore, unfortunately. Easily. So this is not about, don't show me ads. This is just, show me content, help me use Twitter, most effectively based on my website visits. Whatever you choose here doesn't matter. Click sign up. They might ask you for a phone number. This is again for more security. I do recommend to use a real phone number if you're doing this right now for real. Um, because the phone number will make your account more secure. They're not going to call you and ask you to buy something, and they're not going to bother you telemarketers. I've used Twitter for years. I've never been bothered via my phone number. But if you don't want to use it, there should be a skip button at the bottom. If there isn't, you have to use a number. And sometimes what happens is if a lot of us are trying to create an account at the same time, Twitter gets concerned. Why are so many people creating Twitter accounts at the same time in the same room? <laughs> so, if it, if it doesn't let you skip it, I would recommend putting the number. Or if you don't want to do any of this right now, that's okay. You can do it at home. Remember, watch the videos. Do it at home. One security thing that I can tell you is our computers have deep freeze. Our computers have a little polar bear staring at you in the corner here. That's deep freeze. And what that is, is our software which has frozen the computer. Anything that you do on our computer, once you restart it, will erase. So if you forgot to log out, if you put your password in, all of that stuff gets erased. We need to do that for our public computers here because a lot of people use our computers. So it is relatively safe to use our computers for this stuff. If you don't want to do it, you can uh, do it at home. The downside of Deep Freeze is that if you copied the syllabus to your desktop, and you didn't take it with you on a USB, or if you saved files on the desktop and you didn't take it with you on a USB, they will be gone. Deep Freeze wipes out everything on the computer for security purposes. So I'm going to try to skip this. It's a very nondescript link.
And oftentimes what happens is, depending on various factors, this may happen easily or not. But I'm going to try to skip it. If it doesn't let me skip it, I will try to put a number. Just one moment, I need to get this code so I can proceed. Okay, so the purpose of that is to uh, try to stop spam accounts. The purpose of having your phone number in there and your, and your email is to help prevent spammers because anyone can create a Twitter account, therefore any spammer can create a Twitter account. Any one of these accounts trying to sell shoddy merchandise or whatever can create a Twitter account. But one way to help try to prevent that is with identification by a phone number and such. So I had to do a little verification here to confirm I'm not a spammer. And then eventually it'll, it'll get to choose a username. This is the one, I, again, that is unique. And here it's telling me you can always change it later, but the username is the unique one. No spaces, no special characters, like exclamation points and such. This one's also limited to, I believe, 15 characters. And so I'm Victor's Bakery, let's say, and I want the username Victor's Bakery. Remember, I can't use apostrophes and such or spaces. But whoops, this username is already taken. So, okay, I'll do uh, the Victor's Bakery. Well, I'm out of space, I can't put the E. But it'll let me take the Victor's Bakery. So often people have trouble here because Twitter's been around 10 years. And Perhaps the perfect name that you want has already been taken, unfortunately. That happens a lot, unfortunately. And I really think Twitter and all of the social networks need to get on the ball and fix this issue, in that sometimes someone creates a Twitter account and then doesn't use it for the last year, for the last five years, seven years. Someone created it and they stopped using it, and Twitter doesn't release it out again, to my knowledge. Most of the networks don't do that. They have to for whatever reason, they let the person that created it, they, they keep it. Someone probably forgot that password now and forgot that email and have no way to get to it. And so these networks don't do a very good job at the moment releasing names out here. Um, <clears throat> so for your own business, if you can't find the perfect name, you might have to get creative. May, you can't put an underscore. You can't put any other special characters except underscores. You cannot put dashes. It'll let you put underscores, but oh, the Victor's Bakery is taken. There's some suggestions down here. Bakery Victor's. Bakery underscore Victor's. Victor's Bakery 1. This happens, unfortunately. And again, these networks don't quite really help us if a name has already been taken and such. It um, was taken and that's it. It's taken. I'm going to choose any of these right here. It, don't choose skip because then it'll give you a generic gibberish kind of name and you don't really want that. I'm going to put a name here. I can change it later and I'll click next. Because it stopped because I don't have my cell phone. I can't find the 
code. Okay. So Twitter then starts up. Hopefully, again, if you're having any trouble, call me over. Um, we'll figure it out. And uh, Twitter just overall is telling us Twitter is a constantly updating stream of the coolest, most important news, media, sports, TV, conversations, all tailored just for you. Tell us what about all the stuff you love and we'll help you set up. So we want to use Twitter as a business and I want to reach an audience. And so what's coming up here is for us to be able to reach an audience that would most care about our project, our products, our, our brand, our company. I'll click Let's Go. This is what are the topics that you're interested in? Think of this in terms of what your business is, what it's about. Victor's Bakery. I want to reach people that are into baking and cooking, cakes, birthday parties, you know, these sorts of keywords, these sorts of topics uh, as a target audience. Can you click more than one? I believe so. I'm going to click, for example, lifestyle and also home. Yes, you can select a few different ones. If none of these are your exact topics, you can search up here for a specific topic. I'm not seeing here anywhere. I don't think I'm seeing cooking. Well, I see food and drink. That one's close. But let's say I was looking for specifically people that are interested in cookies. Cookie dough. As I start typing, it might give me other suggestions. The point of this, again, this is useful for us to help find an audience. If you didn't create an account and just logged into your existing one, don't worry, we'll do a version of this eventually once I've created this. For the moment, I'm just going to select food and drink, whatever you want, continue. might ask you to connect an email account. The value of that is that it'll scan your address book and say, oh, this person's on Twitter. Would you like to connect with them? That person's on Twitter. Would you like to connect with them? This could have some value, and you'll find plenty of articles out there that tell you the value of this and the non-value of this. I personally don't find this very valuable to connect your address book because the email address you would connect here unless it's a business address full of business contacts I don't think it's too valuable are you going to market are you going to advertise to your friends and family your product again every week you know they're your friends and all of that but are they really going to want to follow your business to be seeing your business tweets over and over and over you know, for personal Facebook, you have those connections because you want to share those family photos and those experiences and such. But for business, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? And maybe you'll be able to do it for a little bit, but will it be sustainable? So I personally don't find a lot of value to this. Others will tell you, yes, reach out to as many people as possible to get as many followers. I don't think it's as valuable for your friends and family. So I'll say no thanks. Make your timeline yours, follow some of these accounts below and you'll see what they share. Follow means following as people is how you get to see what people share. You'll see their tweets, but they won't see yours unless they follow you too. So Twitter, well, let's compare it with Facebook. Facebook is one-to-one -one connections. Twitter is one to many connections. Traditionally on Facebook, we use Facebook by sending a friend request. You find an old high school friend, you send a friend request, they approve it. You're both connected, you can see each other's content. When you share a picture, they can see it. When they share a video, you can see it. It's a one-to-one -one connection, traditionally, on Facebook. Twitter. <clears throat> Twitter is one-to-many in that you can choose to follow an account and see their stuff, but unless they follow you back, they won't see your stuff. 
Um, you can follow lots of accounts. They might not follow you back. They might not be interested to see your content, but you've chosen to follow a lot of accounts to see their content. Vice versa. You can have a lot of followers. You can have a lot of customers following you to see what your latest tweets are, your latest pictures, your latest videos, your latest coupons, whatever. But you don't have to follow back all of those customers. It's a one-to-many connection. So the purpose of this setup right here, I had selected food and drink, and it's saying you might be interested in following Epicurious, Food and Wine, uh, Ruth Reichel, Andrew Zimmern, etc. It's saying because you're interested in this topic, you might be interested in following all of these accounts. You might be interested in seeing the pictures and the videos and the tweets and the links of all of these accounts. So for me, it has chosen, it has activated all of these. It's having me follow all of these. I can turn any of these on or off. I can say, no, I don't want to see any of these. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to say there is a value for your business account to follow other accounts. It's valuable for your business, your Twitter business account to follow other accounts either personal or business accounts it's valuable for your account to follow other accounts because you can get inspiration from other people's tweets. You can keep up to date with the industry. You can see what other people in your industry are tweeting about. You can keep up to date with that sort of thing. Get inspiration about look at what they posted, look at what they shared, look at that picture. I can do that. You can get inspiration. It's also valuable because can help you get more followers. When you follow an account, you might get followers back. I've chosen to follow one account, they follow me back. They don't have to. It's a one-to-many connection, but some of them may follow me back. So if it's suggesting you here to follow all these accounts, I would follow some of them, however many you want. You can unfollow later. We'll see how to do that. Maybe you can click turn them all off for the moment and then pick and choose which ones you want or leave them all on, turn them on off, whatever, doesn't quite matter but it is a value to following a few of them, you know, two, three, four, five, whatever, twenty you can unfollow later based on my location it's also recommending me all of these local San Diego accounts that might be interesting I'm Victor's Bakery. It might be interesting for me to keep up with the gas lamp quarter. There's going to be a food festival, maybe, and I can be part of that food festival. So I'm going to leave all of these on. I can unfollow. I'll show you how to unfollow later. I'll say, yes, I'd like to see all this content. Basically, when Andrew Zimmern tweets something, I can see it. Whenever any of these tweet something, I could see it. I followed them. Click follow. Let's pause here. If you are either creating an account, did everyone get to this screen, or did everyone manage to log in that wanted to log in? Does anyone need any help at this point? Or any questions? Unfortunately, what I see happen when someone gets that something went wrong, actually, is too many of us are trying to do it at once and it's not going to let us. Mm -hmm. I will just wait a moment because a lot of us are trying to do it at the same time. Just stay on the screen for a little bit. We're going to take a break soon. And then when we pause it, we'll try again. Do you think it's spam because it's all there? Yeah. Any questions here? 
Yeah. Well, let's get this going right here. I put in the phone number and it says it's not valid. Is it uh, like a voice, a home number? No, not my phone number. It's a regular phone number. I tried out the phone number and it didn't work, so I used my real one. And my For the moment, that's weak because sometimes when a lot of us are doing it at the same time, it, it stops you. Mm -hmm. All right, but when you go back, I'll go to where it is. Yeah, so I will just wait. Uh, and then I'm going to take a break soon, so we'll just wait and then we'll try to do it one more time. I just clicked on it and it says something's wrong with it. Well, it says it's still the same. It's still the same. So I'll just wait there for a while. Is it the same as the Yes, it does. All right, everyone, so uh, what we want to do here then, we want to be at this screen here, and we want to be at this screen here, and we have a basic uh, screen. If you just created the account, we have a very basic account because we have no icon, we have no logo. Question there, ladies? Question? <coughs> okay. And so, um, one of the big questions is, okay, I'm following 21 accounts in my case, and it says I haven't tweeted anything, I've got, I'm following 21, and it doesn't say anything about followers. I don't have any followers yet. I mentioned over here that one of the valuable reasons to follow other accounts is because it helps to get more followers. So, on the topic of followers, followers are very valuable, very important. You want to get as many as possible because followers are your captive audience. The audience that cares. 
the main reason you're going to get a follower is because someone cares enough about your product or your brand, your business, etc., to really want to keep up to date with you. Every time that you tweet a picture, a photo, a video, a link, a coupon, um, an event, whatever, people can find out that you've um, that you've done that much better than someone walking by this pin board here and seeing your flyer much better than you getting a flyer on your windshield that you don't care about much better than listening to the radio and hearing an ad about something you don't care about this is much more direct marketing and so followers are valuable because this is the audience that really cares now we'll be talking of course about how to get followers there's a lot of nuances and tricks and tips and do's and do nots We'll talk about all of that stuff, but the big idea is we want followers. Because, going by the 1% rule, only 1% of your followers are your most active followers. And what I mean by that is, whatever number of followers you have, take 1% of that. Those will be the ones that will really want to buy your product, read your article, um, follow your link, use your coupon, see your paintings, visit to your visit your restaurant. And this is a very small number, isn't it? If I have a hundred followers, what's one percent of a hundred? One. <laughs> one. One real follower out of a hundred might be the one that really cares, the one that can click that buy button. Now, not everyone is going to be with such a very conservative number. You might be amazing online and have an amazing product and might be closer to 50%. Even 50% out of 100 followers, that's 50 people that will really buy your product. Maybe you're so amazing that 80% of your followers will click buy. That's a very, very, very high bar right there. So being more realistic, 1%, 2%, 5%, maybe 10%. That's why we want to get as many followers as we can. The more followers we have, if we've got a thousand followers, one percent of that, I think, is ten or a hundred or something. Um, that, look at look at those numbers. Look at how it's stacked against us. Because it's very easy for someone to click follow. Suddenly, the mouse gets very difficult to use to click buy. So, the more followers we have, we're going to have an an amount of them that are the most active, the most ardent, the most serious to actually buy your product, read your article, donate to your nonprofit, etc. So based on that, then I always get the question, should I try to build followers right away? Or should I post or should I tweet first? If I try to tweet first, I just created an account. And if I start, if I start to tweet, if I start to post pictures and all of that and photos and links, I have no followers. I'm tweeting to no one. No one's paying attention. <laughs> I have no one to pay attention to me with no followers. On the other side, if I try to get followers first and they come to my account and they look at my account and it only says Victor's Bakery, no tweets, no pictures, why would I follow that? There's nothing to see. So that's a catch-22 right there. If I try to get followers with no content, I'll get no followers. If I tweet, tweet right now, I have no followers for them to see it. The way you break this catch-22 is to do this one, in my opinion. We will tweet to no one but we're going to create content that will then entice people when they come to our account to follow. We will see, they will see content and then be enticed to follow. They're not going to be enticed to follow a blank, empty account with nothing. Answer, tweet first. Create content first. We call them tweets on Twitter, their posts, whatever you want to call them, tweets. Posting content, that's a generic term. I'm going to post content on Facebook. I'm going to post content on Pinterest. I'm going to post content on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Peach, etc., etc., etc. But here we're going to call them tweets. I'm going to post content first. Question. 
in terms of making any real SEO difference, what are we looking at as far as the number of followers to change our ranking? Like thousands or no, it's not about uh, quantity really, it's about quality. So the more followers that I have that are active and engage with me and really care, that helps your SEO, that helps your traffic much more than having 10,000 followers. If I have 100 followers that are active, that's much better than having 1,000 followers that are not really doing anything. So the answer is to tweet first, create content first. So here's a goal. Um, three to five tweets to start off with. Whatever time period. I'm not saying you need to do this within one day, one week, one month, whatever. I'm telling you, you need to create content. Three tweets, five tweets, ten tweets, doesn't quite matter. You need to create some content. We'll talk about creating a tweet and what to write and how and all of that, of course. There's so much to talk about. Again, I could talk about Twitter nonstop a month. We have one day. So, Whatever we're learning, however, on Twitter, many of these concepts that we talk about here will relate a lot in Facebook and Instagram and so forth. So each network has its nuances and specific concepts. So this is also going to apply to some degree to Instagram and to some degree on LinkedIn because why would someone follow you on LinkedIn with no content? Okay, post content on LinkedIn. So a lot of these concepts are universal. What I'm saying here is we're going to post some content. Content could be pictures, could be pictures, etc. We'll, we'll do that in a moment, but let's talk about in general concepts. Three to five tweets to start off with, and have a complete profile. My profile is simply only Victor's Bakery. He doesn't have a biography. It doesn't have a logo, it doesn't have a cover image, location, it doesn't have any of that stuff. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about that, then take a break, and then start to tweet. I want to complete my profile. Because I just created my account, it's giving me some steps that I should do. If you didn't create your account, it might not show you this, so I'm going to skip this. This, this will be the same thing that I'm going to talk about in a different way. But this is valuable because it's going to say, don't forget to do this, don't forget to do that. I'm going to show it to you in another way that you can always get back to in case you accidentally closed that. The way that you edit your profile, because one of the things we want to do is have a unique customized profile. None of these other accounts are generic. They have their logo, they have their graphic, they have some text. This one over here, logo, background, text logo, background, text. They all have a complete profile to help me understand. I've never heard of BrainJet before, but I'm seeing the most interesting curated stories, images, and facts from around the world. Okay, now I understand what they're about, which may then entice me to follow. Ours is empty. Nothing is here. No enticement for people to follow. So at the top right corner, you should see a little egg. If you're brand new, you'll see an egg. If you've used it before, you'll see your logo. We haven't hatched yet. We need to hatch. We need to have a real account. So click on the egg and select View Profile. Even if you already have an icon, go ahead and click the egg and then View Profile. This is what people are going to see. I just created an account. They'll see nothing, just a sea of blue. But if you have already used it a little bit, you might have a name, maybe text, maybe a logo, but no cover image up here. Let's click Edit Profile. Oh, yes. I have 77 followers already. I think it says you have 77 following. You're following 77. Oh, following. <laughs> <laughs> Let's click Edit Profile on the right side there. And at some point, as soon as I can, I want to add a profile photo here. This is often the logo of my business. Notice it's a square picture. You, you want to you want to have a square picture here. Your logo may be rectangular. 
It's a good logo, but the problem with it is Twitter wants a square picture, so it's going to cut it off. Don't put a square, don't put a rectangular photo here. Don't be like the Chargers, where it's cutting off the logo. It looks nice there, but here it's cutting it off. So, you need to use some sort of, if your logo is rectangular, you need to figure out some sort of way, ask your web designer, graphic designer, or if you made it yourself, figure out a way to make it square. Maybe add a little bit of extra space to make it square. Because most of the networks nowadays, not just Twitter, want some sort of square logo. Either square or round. So you're in the same problem. If you've got a rectangular logo and you put it into Pinterest, which is a round logo, it's still going to cut it off to proportional size. So I don't have my photo handy, I can't upload it, but at some point, as soon as possible, you want to add your company logo. There's a header photo up here, which is a nice wide graphic. At some point you want to add a, that wide graphic. Look at the, look, the Chargers one, that's a nice one. It's nice and wide, and you can't see it in my projector, but it's got some nice blue tones here, it's a little dark logo there, it looks nice. You want that kind of wide graphic. If I go browse, just you know, I'm just gonna uh, look at CNN for example, look at how they've done it. Their logo at the top, they've got some graphics here that show I'm all, we're also on Instagram, we're also on Snapchat. These are not clickable, but it's a different way to show something here. You don't, you can put anything you want up here. It's gonna be a wide graphic. Let's see another one. Let's look at a couple news sources. Look at how MSNBC has done it. Logo, this is a wide graphic, but they put a little bit of padding of blue to make it fit. And then up on top, they put their personalities. Same sort of thing here. Square graphic, wide graphic. Let's look at our college. logo, cover photo, this is a collage. You can use that up there for more branding to get people's attention. Again, to entice people to follow. Right now you just have a sea of blue. Question? Can you modify these all the time easily like you can in LinkedIn? Yeah, you can change them.